Hello everyone. This weekend, I have a new release for Desktop Shader Toy. If I head over to the releases page on GitHub, you can see that there are the Windows and Linux zips to download it. If you then go ahead and go to your downloads, you can open it up and you can see the new UI that I've made. This, uh, previously in Desktop Shader Toy, you had the ability to pause and play you could rewind to the beginning and you could download Shader Toys from their URL. But I wanted to add the ability for modifying the Shader Toy from the app itself. So w something that is uh, uh, new is this whole bottom panel here. So I can go ahead and select an input if you're familiar with Shader Toy. These are the same textures that are in the actual app on the actual website, I mean. And on top of that, you can also edit the code. When you click this button to edit the code, it will uh, try to open it in the default text editor. So if you don't have a default text editor for, or default application set for GLSL, it'll prompt you with, with a window saying, what do you want to open this with? But I already have that set to VS Code, so um, I have it opened here now and it's in restricted mode because that's just how VS Code works by default. Um, but once I trust it, I, I can get my extensions to work with syntax highlighting. And, and so now I have this iChannel here. Why don't I go ahead and say texture iChannel zero uh, at uv.rgb and uh, assign it into the color. So if I save the file, it'll automatically recompile it in the app. Now, if I were to not swizzle this from a VEC4 to a VEC3, then save it. When it compiles, it'll give me a compile error saying cannot convert from four component vector to a three component vector. So it'll give you errors, but on top of that, on top of being able to modify a single shader, of course, you can add more uh, passes. So let me say add a common buffer and by default this common buffer will just have this function called sum function which adds together a vec4 and a float. So I can go ahead and add 0 0.5 um, and uh, let's see we got we got an error. What is it? Oh whoops <laughs> I still didn't fix that. <clears throat> so now we see we've added 0 0.5 with this function from the other file. Of course, we can go ahead and add another buffer and say even have it feed back into itself. And then I can, I can go ahead and use it in, in this shader and you can see we get that blue color. One thing to note is that these files are temporary. If I hover over it, you can see it's in my temp folder. And the reason being is that I don't want you to have to deal with the file system, but if you make changes, I wanna make it so that you can actually save and load your projects. So um, if you press the save button, then you'll see uh, it'll open a file browser for you to go ahead and save it. So let me say save it as test.json. And <clears throat> now if I close the application, and I reopen it. So I go back into desktop shader toy, and then I go ahead and drag and drop this JSON on. You'll see I, I'll have the same shader toy as before, and I can go switch back to, I don't know, some other texture. And it all work just how it was before. But these files are now deleted. So I would need to reopen them if I want to edit them, okay? Now, I've tried to make it so that as many shader toys from the shader toy website actually work within desktop shader toys. So if I go ahead and drag these shader toys on, you'll see that, um, I didn't realize this one was a game. Um, you can see that all of these shader toys um, that I have here all work and they even have all of their passes. This one's saying you need to remove the no no compile define in order to get it to work. So if I go ahead and do that, 
then it'll recompile it and here we are. All right. One of the last features I wanted to show off is that there's also VSync. So you'll see that um, I have 165 Hertz monitor, but if I toggle off VSync, it will raise the frame rate and so, or lower it depending on how slow the shader is. But most are pretty optimized and so they, they will run pretty well. So something else I wanted to mention was that some shader toys still don't really play well with resizing the window. And so um, sometimes you might want to reset it. Uh, one way to do that is always with the UI to go back to frame zero, but you can also just reload the shader toy with control R now. Um, and I think that's about it for the updates. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.